So far we've talked a lot about identities concerning trig functions, the definitions of the trig functions and how they're related. Now let's talk about how the trig functions act appear in triangles. Let's suppose we've got a general triangle, not necessarily a right triangle. So let's draw it like this. And we've got three sides, let's call them A, A, B, and C. And opposite angle A will have opposite side A will have angle alpha, opposite B will have angle beta, opposite C will have angle gamma. So the two important identities about this are the law of sines and the law of cosines. The law of sines says that sine alpha divided by A is the same thing as sine beta divided by B is the same thing as sine gamma divided by C. The law of cosines gives the length of any one side in terms of the other two sides and the, and the angle. So we'll do it for C. It says that C squared is A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine gamma. So if this were a right triangle, then the cosine would be 0, and we'd get back the, Pythagor the, pa the Pythagorean theorem. So where did these come from? For the law of sines, let's drop the perpendicular here. Okay, let's call this side h for height. Okay, well, by looking at this triangle here, we say the sine of, of gamma is the height divided by a. Sine of gamma is h divided by a, which also means that a is that sorry scratch that but now if we look at this triangle here the sine of alpha is the opposite over the hypotenuse because this is also a right triangle so the sine of alpha is h over c so we have that a sine alpha is equal to h, which is a sine gamma is h, which is c sine alpha. So if we divide both sides of this equation by ac, we get that the sine of gamma divided by c is the sine of alpha divided by a. Now that shows that that relating c and a works. The same argument would re work relating A and B if you drop the perpendicular this way, and work would work uh, relating B and C if you drop the perpendicular this way. Okay, so that's the law of sines. The law of cosines, we have to work a little bit harder unless we know vectors and then it becomes easy. So let's do it without vectors. Let me draw the triangle again. So A, B, here's gamma, and here's C. So I'm going to drop our perpendicular, H. And we know that H is A sine gamma. Now this side over here is going to be A cosine gamma. So what's left over here has to be b minus a cosine gamma. And now we've got a right triangle. We've got c squared is equal to a sine gamma squared plus b minus a cosine gamma squared, which is a squared sine squared gamma plus b squared plus a, si a squared cosine squared gamma minus 2ab cosine gamma, but sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, so this is a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine gamma. Now, we can get the same thing with, with vectors even more easily. Let me draw the triangle again, 
Only now let's draw the vector here as a vector A. And this is the vector B. And this is the vector C. But as a vector, C is A minus B. So C squared is C dot C, which is A minus B dot A minus B, which is A dot A dot A plus B dot B minus twice A dot B. And that's A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine gamma.